first of all, thank you, like always, for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, and okay. keep on. Understand it's a very busy time. How are you doing right now? Are you you doing well? Uh, we're doing well. Uh, doing a lot of meetings as is everyone right now. Teleconferences. We're visiting uh, with our commissioners. We're visiting with local businesses, economic development, hospitals, physicians, uh, going through the whole gamut and talking to a lot of individuals as well. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of concern, obviously, first for the health of families, uh, for our communities. Uh, but then also uh, for the survivability of a lot of our small businesses uh, throughout our district. And uh, we're very hopeful that uh, as we're seeing this curve bend, uh, that we're going to be able to get our people back to work soon and uh, return to a level of normalcy. There you go. And I think a huge part of that is the um, payroll protection program, which is something yes. that we've been following. Um, I know it's something you've been following as well. Right now, um, as of today, what is the status of that? Well, uh, the appropriated funds have now been exhausted, uh, which is frankly no surprise. Uh, important to note that seven out of 10 jobs created in the country are created by small business. And uh, our district, the third district, is a collection of small businesses, small entrepreneurs uh, trying to make sure that uh, they've got that opportunity to be able to live the American dream. And if I may just give you one example, I visited uh, with a lady, she and her husband have a hair salon in Grand Junction. And uh, they were for have three employees were forced to shut down, and she wanted to make sure that uh, fully understood that their entire revenue stream had been cut off uh, by being forced to close. So those are the real impacts that people are feeling at home. And so uh, we're advocating, supportive of uh, Leader McConnell's position in the United States Senate, uh, to be able to get more uh, dollars to those small businesses right now who have applications ready to go who need that real assistance right now. And we hope that they'll drop the politics. Uh, this is something that is a front burner item for so many families that are worried about being able to pay the mortgage uh, to be able to keep that small business open. Yeah, and you said exactly that we are an area of small businesses, we're made by them. Um, of the current funds, I know that we said that the funds were basically exhausted, but of the ones that have already been appropriated, how many or what percent would be coming to our area, a more rural area? You know, for the uh, state of Colorado, I visited uh, with a number of our local banks. Uh, they've reached out and made thousands of loans. I don't have the total number in right now. I think we've accounted as a state for about 2% uh, of the loans that were made in the country. So uh, there was obviously a lot of demand, and uh, I know there is still some demand. I talked to a couple of small business owners this morning uh, who hope to be able to get their applications approved and to be able to have the resources uh, to be able to keep the business going and to keep their people employed. Yeah, and so with those who have the applications in and are kind of waiting for this funding, since most of the funding is exhausted, how long will these people have to wait if we don't find a solution quickly? Well, um, the, everybody who has already approved, uh, they will receive that funding. It can take uh, up to 10 days. Uh, I think it is important to know uh, this came to, together in a very rapid fashion. Uh, you know, we stepped back about a month right now. Uh, we had the most robust economy in the world, more jobs uh, than we had people to be able to fill them. Uh, and we saw when we closed the doors on the businesses uh, through state government orders, uh, there was a real impact. But if they've been approved, the funds will be there. They will hit their accounts. And again, uh, we'd encourage uh, Senator Schumer and later uh, Speaker Pelosi, drop the politics. Uh, this is about people. This is about families. Uh, this is about their futures, and uh, let's get those resources available. Yeah, and with the last time we spoke, you gave some great advice to small businesses and for people who are looking to support small businesses. Um, you know, with this time, as we're kind of seeing more small businesses get approved for this funding, um, you know, same question. What advice would you give to people in the community to help make sure these small businesses are flourishing? You know, where the opportunities present themselves, uh, I'm hearing a lot of stories uh, out of our communities banding together. Uh, people are redesigning some of their business model to be able to help build masks uh, for uh, our hospitals, for our uh, care providers, to be able to do that. Local restaurants all have signs up that say, we have takeout available. Go ahead and try and support them to the best of your ability. And uh, remember, these are the people that uh, we rally around and need for our communities to be able to uh, be sustainable and successful going forward. We will get past this. Uh, but it's going to be a standing and working together. It came out of uh, uh, Colorado County scene. 
uh, that the $1.7 billion that is coming back to the state of Colorado uh, in terms of assistance uh, was directed by Congress uh, to make sure that it got to the municipalities, to our counties, to our tribal entities uh, as well. There were direct appropriations to six communities in Colorado uh, that uh, were over and above that $1.7 billion. Uh, just got off a conference call with the governor, uh, visited with him directly, and asked if those dollars were going to be able to get to our communities, to our counties, uh, for the assistance that they need right now for the shortfalls that they are having. Uh, he had indicated that uh, this was going to be in the hands of the state legislature. Uh, I, I think it is important to note, Congress did direct that money uh, to be spent uh, to help support our counties and our local communities and tribal entities as well. Uh, so we certainly hope that we'll see action soon coming out of Denver. Uh, given that they're still not in session. Uh, I'm not counting on the state legislature to be able to act quickly, obviously, on that. So I encourage the governor uh, to do what he can to get those resources out to the counties and the communities now. Perfect, thank you. And, right. and with that, if I can just piggyback on that real quick, um, right. you know, then with, on the local level then for us, for example, in Mesa County, um, yes. is there the possibility that we could see those funds directly? Or like you said, would it be allocated through the state? The, the intent of Congress in the CARES Act, we specifically stated in the legislation that it was for aid to the counties, uh, to the municipalities, and to the tribal entities. So I think the legislative intent of Congress in appropriating the CARES Act funds is very direct, and uh, we'd encourage the state to make sure those dollars get here quickly. I'm talking uh, county commissioners visited uh, with uh, Commissioners Puglisi uh, earlier this morning, John Justman, Scott McGinnis. Uh, we have counties right now that are getting very strapped, uh, as well as the cities as well. Let's get those resources where they're needed. And uh, I'm gonna continue to fight and advocate to make sure that those dollars get out into rural Colorado. Perfect, all right, Representative, thank you so much for speaking with us. We'll look forward to talking to you soon. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you, have a great rest of your day. You too, bye-bye. Bye, thank you.